here we are going to learn about the definition of basis okay so what is a basis a subset b of a vector space v over the field f is called a basis of v okay a subset b of a vector space vf is called a basis of v if this set is linearly independent and every element of v can be written as a linear span of the elements of this okay if v belongs to v then v can be written as a linear combination of this where ei belongs to b for all alpha i belongs to the field so remember that we say that it is a this b is a basis only if b is linearly independent first of all the set should be linearly independent and every vector can be written as a linear combination of the elements of b then we say that this b is the basis of v so there are some examples of the basis so if i take v to be fn then the basis i take as e1 e2 en where ei is equal to zero where where it is of this type where i one is in the i tuple okay is in the i coordinate is one and all the other coordinates are zero so this set we can see easily that this set is linearly independent okay and every vector in v can be written as a linear combination of this okay so since it is linearly independent and it span v so that's why this is a basis for v okay and these bases are called standard bases okay so if we take an example for here they have shown already it is linear combination and it generates v hence it is a basis okay it is a basis of v so these bases are called the standard basis of fn so if i take in r2 the standard basis are 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 if i take r3 the standard basis are 1 comma 0 0 comma 0 1 0 0 then next one is that n 0 0 1 so these are the standard basis of r3 and so on okay so another example if i take a polynomial okay if i take the vector space to be the set of polynomials then this set is linearly independent and this is the basis and it spans the whole vector space so this set is linearly independent and it spans the vector space so hence it's a basis for v so the remark one here a vector space v over the field f is said to be a finite dimension okay if there exists a finite set s such that means if there is if you can find a finite set such that the linear span is equal to the whole vector space and its dimension of v is the num and we know how if we say what is the dimension of the vector space is nothing but the number of element in s okay number of element in s is called the dimension of the vector space so the remark one states that you take a vector space then this vector space is said to be a finite dimension if we can find a subset of v okay subset s which is a finite and this set should be linearly independent and it is capable of spanning the whole vector space okay then it becomes the basis okay this s is the basis so number of elements present in s how many elements are present in s is called the dimension of the vector space so the remark two let us go through with the remark two a vector space vf is called a finite dimensional if it has a finite basis so we say it is a finite dimension if the number of elements in the basis set is finite then we call it is a finite dimension otherwise if it, the number of elements in the basis set is infinite then we say it is an infinite dimensional vector space so there are here we have taken already so this vector space is a finite dimension because we have finite basis here finite number of elements in the basis but here this is a infinite dimension uh, infinite basis because it has an infinite number of bases so this is of infinite dimension since the basis is infinite so this is of infinite dimension now let us do this theorem here so we take a vector space over the field f a subset b of v is a basis of v so it is already b is a basis now if and only if every element in v has a unique expression as a linear combination 
of the elements of B. We have to show that any elements in V I take, then it can be expressed as the linear combination of B of the elements of B, and that combina uh, linear combination is unique. So I take B to be the basis of V. Then B is consisting of these vectors. So I take one vector here. Then since this is a basis, this element can be written as a linear combination of this. Since we want to show the uniqueness, this can be written as a linear combination of the same vector with different scalars. So here I have taken this. So these two are x. So these two should be equal. So we take this are equal. So we have here, these are equal. So you can bring this side. So we get alpha 1, same this way. Now since this u1, u2 are the element are linearly independent because b is a basis so the b is linearly independent set so these scalars should be zero so we have here alpha 1 beta 1 equal to alpha 2 beta 2 which is equal to alpha n beta n which is equal to zero so we get all these things are zero so this implies alpha 1 is equal to beta 1 and alpha 2 is equal to beta 2 and alpha n is equal to beta n So here we get alpha n equal to beta n. So now we prove we, we have shown that the x can be written, written as unique expression as a linear combination of the element of B. Okay. This x can be written uniquely as a linear combination of the elements of B. In the general case, now let us take here we are taking a finite basis. Suppose we take an infinite basis. So B is possibly infinite. So this x can be written as a linear combination of the elements of B as well as this. Same way, these scalars belong to the field. So this are X, so these two should be equal. So we can bring here, but this U is B is linearly independent set. So the scalar should be zero. So we have alpha U minus beta U equal to zero for all U belongs to B. So this implies alpha U equal to beta U. So thus X has a unique expression as a linear combination of the elements of B. So we have expressed that every element of x of element of v can be written as a linear combination of the element of b but that linear combination is unique suppose we assume that every element of v has a unique expression as a linear combination of the elements of b then we have to show that b generates v or b is the basis so i'm taking here suppose we take some scalars here from the field and these are the elements of b okay we can write this as the linear combination of zero since the uh, since every element of v can be written uniquely this zero also can be written uniquely so zero can be written as zero into u1 plus zero into u2 plus zero into u3 till plus zero into un so if we equate the vector coefficient of each vector then we get the scalar should be zero so we have here alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 which is equal to dot 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 till alpha n equal to 0 hence b is we saw that this linear combination is 0 so this li is linearly independent and therefore it is capable we can see already here that it is capable of spanning v so hence it generates okay it is already capable of generating v and we have also shown that this set is linearly independent so that's why this is nothing b is nothing but the basis of v thank you